In this video, we're going to introduce a new thermodynamic property known as enthalpy. Now, before we get into what enthalpy is, I want to make sure that we understand how energy typically is, uh, is transferred or used in chemical reactions. So here I have the example of water and water being broken down into two, uh, two ions. So the OH anion and the hydrogen cation. Now, in order to break this bond, right, you have water, it consists of two uh, oxygen-hydrogen bonds. In order to break that bond, you're going to need to use energy, right? So it's going to have to be some sort of transfer of energy into your system of water in order to break those bonds and form the relevant uh, cation and anion, right? So this is a process that would absorb energy. This is an endothermic process. It requires energy to break bonds. And every, almost every chemical reaction you can think of is always some sort of, um, you know, some sort of cascade of breaking and forming bonds, right? There's an interplay between bonds being broken and bonds being formed in traditional chemical reactions. Now, it, on the contrary, if these, uh, these ions come back together to form the water molecule, right? If a bond is formed, that's going to release energy. So you form a bond, and that's going to release some energy. That's an exothermic process. Usually this energy is released in the form of heat. And typically the energy that's required to, to break bonds is also going to be heat as well. Right, so uh, we need a way to quantify heat in a very meaningful way for chemical reactions. And that's where enthalpy comes into play. So enthalpy uh, thermodynamically is defined in the following way. So enthalpy is going to be the energy, the total energy of your system, plus pressure times volume, right? E plus PV. This is the thermodynamic definition of enthalpy. Now, I want to make an um, analogy with the uh, first law of thermodynamics so that we can understand enthalpy on a deeper level. So if we start from the first law of thermodynamics, right, we know that Delta E is going to be equal to Q plus W, right? So now let's, uh, we, we, let's assume that we're dealing with a pressure volume process, so PV work. If we're dealing with PV work, then we can change this to Q minus P delta V, right? And let's say specifically we're looking at a constant pressure process if that's the case, then we'll be looking at uh, the heat transfer at constant pressure. So I'm going to denote that with a subscript P here. So Q sub P minus P delta V. And let me add in the delta E's here. So now if we isolate uh, the heat transfer, then we'll get the following expression, right? So if we isolate QP, that's going to be equal to delta E plus P delta V. Right, so we get this expression for the heat transfer at constant pressure, our Q sub P, the heat transfer at constant pressure. Now let's look at enthalpy, right? So let's say that we wanna look at an enthalpy change. Then that means we'll have to look at the change of both the energy and the pressure volume relationship, right? So we're gonna have to look at delta H being equal to delta E, our energy change, plus delta PV, right? So the change in PV. Now, again, let's look at a constant pressure process, right? So if we think about this, hap uh, any process occurring at constant pressure, right? We'll have delta H is equal to delta E. But now if, if pressure if pressure's not changing, then the only term here is gonna be P delta V, right? We don't have to consider a changing pressure. We only have to consider that changing volume. So the only term we need here is the pressure times the change in volume for a constant pressure process. Well, if you look here, right, this expression is exactly the same as the one that we got for the heat transfer at constant pressure from the first law of thermodynamics. So this tells us exactly what enthalpy is, right? So delta H is going to be equal to the heat transfer at constant pressure. That's the definition of enthalpy. Enthalpy is the heat transfer for a constant pressure process. And this is a constant refrain throughout chemistry. 
a lot of chemistry is done at constant pressure. A lot of it's done on bench tops and labs. Uh, a lot of it's done at a constant steady pressure, at atmospheric pressure. And so these thermodynamic potentials that derive from constant pressure turn out to be very useful to chemists. Okay, so we have that. So when we think about, um, when we think about enthalpy changes for chemical reactions, right? So if, we, if we're looking at a chemical reaction, then delta H is going to be the difference in the enthalpy from the products minus the reactants, right? So we'll have an enthalpy for the products minus whatever our enthalpy is for the reactants, right? So this is just like any other change being final minus initial with our final being our products and the initial, what we start with being the reactants, right? Now, delta H is going to be positive if the products, if the enthalpy of the products is greater than the enthalpy of the reactants, right? So we'll have a positive delta H if the enthalpy of the products is greater than the enthalpy of the reactants, right? And so a positive enthalpy change is going to mean that that process absorbed heat. So that's going to be an endothermic process. Right, so if our, enthalpy, if our enthalpy of the products is greater than the enthalpy of the reactants, that gives us an endothermic process. By contrast, if we have a negative delta H, that must mean that this uh, enthalpy for the reactants is greater than the enthalpy of the products, right? So we'll have enthalpy of the products must be less than the enthalpy of the reactants. In that case, we'll have a negative delta H. That means that that process must be releasing heat. So that's going to be an exothermic process. Right, so, so this is basically our enthalpy change related to chemical reactions and whether or not that reaction is absorbing or releasing heat. Okay, so let's look at an example. So we have a reaction here. So it says the enthalpy change for the following reaction. This is the combustion of methane. Uh, the following, the enthalpy change for that reaction is negative 891 kilojoules for that reaction as written. So as written with this stoichiometry, right? Um, this is going to be the enthalpy released, right? Uh, and we know it's released, right? Because we have a negative there. So we know that for this reaction, this amount of heat is released. So a, part A is asking you what quantity of heat is released for each mole of water formed. So for part A, we're asking how much heat is released for one mole of water. So we know we have one mole of water, right? And we basically wanna use this enthalpy as a conversion factor, right? We know that there's going to be negative 891 kilojoules released Looking at the stoichiometry of this problem, um, there's going to be negative 891 kilojoules released for every two moles of water, right? So that means we put two moles of H2O on the denominator, right? Those units cancel out. So you end up with 445.5 kilojoules released for every one mole of water, right? And part B is asking you what quantity is released, what quantity of heat is released for each mole of O2 reacted, right? So again, we take a similar approach here. We wanna know the amount of heat released for one mole of O2. From the balanced chemical equation, we know that there's negative 891 kilojoules for every two moles of O2, right? So same deal here, right? 198 kilojoules for every two moles of O2. And so that's going to give you again 445.5 kilojoules released for every one mole of O2. Right now, I didn't put this here, but if we had a part C that said how much is released for every one mole of CO2, since there's a one to one mole, since there's only one mole of CO2 for each one of these reactions that occurs, right, it would be negative 891 kilojoules released for every one mole of CO2, right? So you can basically use this uh, enthalpy released, right, is, if it's given to you as a conversion factor to figure out how much is released for a certain amount of a given reactant 
uh, consumed or product produced. 